I'm Nick Snow, watching government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. Simply because a problem has become somewhat less urgent doesn't mean it's no longer a problem. Volumes and shipments of crude oil and products by rail in the U.S. may have fallen from their peaks in the last year or so. But it still matters how well states and communities can respond when there are accidents, spills, and or fires involving any kind of energy transportation system. There was a bubble in crude oil prices. We also built one in infrastructure. There are way too many transportation assets to handle the needs. Rusty Rizal, president of RBM Energy, told a committee examining domestic transportation of petroleum, natural gas, and ethanol at the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine on May 12th. What caused the glut? There are 1,281 onshore crude rigs that are parked out there doing nothing. Only 381 are still working. Crude production fell during 2015, but gas production didn't. The industry is much more efficient, able to drill a deep well in an average 7.7 .7 days now, compared to 22.3 days in 2011. A given rig could bring on 9,000 barrels a day of production then. Now it can bring on 27,000 barrels a day, Brazil said. The Bakken Fields production surge created demand for rail transportation to refineries when pipelines weren't available five years ago. Railroads in the upper Midwest were geared to handle agricultural shipments, not larger crude unit trains carrying more than 66,000 barrels in 100 tank cars, Brazil said. 43 unit train and 56 manifest train loading terminals were built he told the experts assembled by the Academy's Transportation Research Board. Pipeline operators responded. When several reversed their flows in 2014, price differences between rail and pipe began to disappear. More crude is moving out of North Dakota by pipeline than by rail now, and more pipelines are being built, Brazil said. Many rail cars are parked on sidings now, because it makes more sense to use pipelines. Many North Dakota producers made take or pay agreements to use rail terminals for up to four years, he continued. Since 2014, 65 upstream companies have declared bankruptcy. That means those take or pay deals will be thrown out, which is hitting mi midstream companies, Brazil said. That could make midstream transportation assets so financially appealing that some refiners might start to buy trucking fleets, he added. But the shifting U.S. oil and gas transportation landscape hasn't dimmed interest in solving problems caused by accidents. One panel examined crude oil shipments properties and environmental impacts of releases. Another brought reports from the American Association of Railroads an independent liquid terminals association on accident prevention programs which have intensified. The work goes on. And crude continues to move by rail, not always without problems. A Union Pacific freight train derailed on the Oregon side of the upper Columbia River Gorge a few weeks later. Fourteen tank cars carrying Bach and crude were overturned, spilling an estimated 1,000 barrels. The crew did not catch fire and no one was injured. Wasco County authorities evacuated the nearby town of Mosier, which imposed water use restrictions for a few days. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.